be moderated by Dr. Devakar. I request Ms. Joycey to take over the session. Thank you, thank you ma'am for a beautiful introduction. Good afternoon everyone. I am Joycey, ICU team leader. I am going to present about fussy alcoholic patient. I welcome all of you for afternoon session of presentation. All of you had your lunch? Feel sleepy or comfortable? Shall we start? Okay. I will start my presentation with one question. Whether the reason for fuzziness in alcoholic patient is always alcohol withdrawal? Okay, I will tell the answer at the end of my presentation. We will move on to case scenario. Mr. X, 47 years old, male got admitted in ICU with the complaints of hallucination fluctuation in consciousness, difficulties in walking, restlessness and fearfulness. His last intake of alcohol was 20 days before and symptoms started 3 days after stopping of alcohol. On examination, heart rate is 103 beats per minute, blood pressure is 150 by 90, SpO2 is 95 in no room air. CNS found restlessness, fluctuation is consciousness, disoriented to time and place, staggering gait and no other focal neurological deficit. Chest is within the normal limit, per abdominal also within the normal limit. Lab reports. Sodium is 136, magnesium is 2, phosphorus 2.7, calcium is 8.8, .8, ABG is respiratory alkalosis, LFT normal and ammonia also 57, normal range. What do you think about this patient's uh, cause of restlessness? Anyone can guess? Only alcohol withdrawal can cause restlessness? Okay. I will tell the answer at the end of my presentation. Definition of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Alcohol withdrawal syndrome referred to Symptoms that may occur when a person who has been drinking too much alcohol on a regular basis suddenly stops drinking. It is life-threatening condition. Up to 50% of alcohol use disorder patients experience withdrawal symptoms. Pathophysiology. There are two neurotransmitters, GABA and glutamine. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Glutamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter. In case of non-alcoholic and chronic regular alcohol use, you can see here, non-alcoholic and regular use of alcohol use, the brain maintains the balance between GABA and glutamine. But in case of intoxication, the CESA is tilted towards the GABA. So CNS depression will be there, patient will become drowsy. At last you can see the withdrawal state, the CESA tilted towards the glutamate, there is CNS excitation. So patient will become uh, agitated and restlessness. After lunch I can see some of the are in this stage, you feel drowsy? No? Sleepy? No? Okay, listen to the uh, section. Clinical features. Minor withdrawal symptom. Within 6 to 12 hours, there is symptoms like insomnia, headache, sweating, mild anxiety and palpitation. Hallucination. Within 12 to 40, uh, 24 hours, there is auditory, visual, tactile hallucinations there. Seizures occurs within 20 to 24 to 48 hours. Clonic, clonic seizures will be there. Delirium tremens occurs 48 to 72 hours. Uh, symptoms like tremors, agitation, hypertension, tachycardia, fever and sweating. Alcohol withdrawal management. There are two types of management. Supportive management and medical management. Supportive management also very important same like 
medical management. We will see what are the supportive management. Adequate hydration, IV and oral, adequate nutrition, monitoring normal level of sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus, giving supplementation of multivitamins, folic acid, zinc and thiamine, avoid stimulations like noise, light, pain and psychological support, frequent visiting time for attenders, at last but not least, psychological counselling. Nursing care plan. In nursing care plan, we will move on to nursing diagnosis. Anxiety is the first and foremost uh, diagnosis for the patient. This is one of the symptoms of alcohol withdrawal symptom. Long term anxiety and stress reduction are the vital parts of the management of alcohol withdrawal symptom. What we can do for anxiety patient, we can give psychological support, allow the visitors to every interval and arrange for psychological counselling. The next one is acute confusion assessment. In acute confusion assessment, patients suffering from alcohol withdrawal syndrome exhibit a lack of clarity in thinking and judgment, confusion and mood changes. So what we have to do? We have to orient the time and place to the patient. We can also allow the visitors uh, to visit the patient and we have to avoid um, uh, light, and, uh, uh, light and noise and we have to keep the patient calm and quiet. Third one is risk for injury assessment. Alcohol withdrawal symptoms are the greater risk for injury due to their symptom. The development of seizures also increases risk, uh, injury risk. We have to provide side rails to the patient, provide low car to the patient, we can give call well, uh, that's all. Therapeutic target in alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Before going to the manage, uh, medical management, we will see what is the therapeutic target of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. There are two scales, that is uh, uh, SIVA and RAS. I am not going to uh, talk about uh, talk briefly about this, uh, this because already uh, Sister Manaha talked about this one. So just know about what is the purpose of this scale. SIVA and RAS scale, the purpose are to assess the patient's symptoms according to the patient's uh, uh, according to the patient's signs and symptoms and this uh, and we also we are using sedation to the patient so we have to uh, monitor the level of sedation and which level we are going to give uh, sedation to the patient this is the ras scale Rich richman agitation sedation scale if you compare the therapeutic target of alcohol withdrawal syndrome scale, SIVA is extremely effort and intensive. It is time consuming. If you talk about RAS, it is easy and simple, less time consuming. So, can you answer which one is better? RAS, yeah. If anyone knows the target rate of RAS? Well, good, very good. Why 0 to minus 1 is good? In this stage, patient is calm and alert. And also, the patient is drowsy, even drowsy, what will happen? Patient respond to the oral commands. Yes? You see, the target rate is 0 to minus 1. Okay. We'll move on to fixed dose for symptoms, trigger dose. Fixed dose means uh, uh, scheduling the medication according to the timing, OD, BD and TDS. We, are, we use this fixer dose in the OPD and the ward. Fixer dose is longer duration of treatment. If they are because of longer duration, it is higher cumulative dose. Because of higher cumulative, there is more side effect. Because of long duration, patient has to stay long, uh, long in the hospital. If we talk about symptom trigger uh, regimen, symptom trigger means treating the patient according to the patient's symptoms. Usually we use in ICU. So, it, it is a shorter duration of treatment. Because of shorter duration, there is lower cumulative dose. Because of lower cumulative, there is less side effect. So, finally, the patient can stay short in the, shorter uh, stay in the hospital. Medical management. There are two medical management. So, uh, medical management, there are two drug of choice, benzodiazepine and barbiturate. We will talk about benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine diaciform, it's a fast acting uh, drug, patient will study it within 2 to 5 minutes, long acting uh, drug because the duration is very long, dose is we can give 10 to 40 milligram IV. 
The second one is lorasiform. It is a delay acting drug. Patient sedated within 5 to 30 minutes. It is, uh, the duration is very short. Dose is 4 to 16 milligram. But there is one disadvantage in lorasiform. If because of delayed action of this drug, patient may, it may lead to repeated doses unnecessarily. So patient go for intubation. So midazolam is a fast acting. Uh, it's sedated within 2 to 5 minutes. We can give 4 mg every 10 minutes until the patient settle down. Understood? Okay, go to barbiturate. Phenobarbital is the drug of choice. If, uh, if the patient is not exposed to uh, benzodiazepine, so we can give the loading dose 10 mg per kg over 30 minutes. If already patient exposed to benzodiazepine, we can give 130 to 260 mg every 15 minutes. So the total cumulative dose is more, we can give more than, uh, we should not give more than 20 mg per, uh, per kg. The, this drug is contraindicated in liver failure. The latest drug we are using in alcohol withdrawal syndrome is dexmedetomidine. That is the advantages are anxiolytic, analgesis and sedative. Dose is 0 0.2 to 1 microgram per kg per hour. There is two side effects. One is reduced BP and one is reduced heart rate. But this uh, side effect is not a big issue for this patient because patient already in alcohol withdrawal symptom in uh, what uh, stage? They have already tachycardia and hypertension. Alcohol withdrawal seizure. So CT brain we can, and the MRI we can do to rule out what? Other causes of seizures. Okay? Drug of choice here also benzodiazepine and phenobarbital. If the patient uh, come to the emergency department after all the physical examination and assessment, if we are going to use the medication diaciform, the initial dose we are starting with 10 mg up to 40 mg we can give every 5 to 10 minutes. If or we are using lorasiform, we can start the dose 4 mg and up to 16 mg we can use every 5 to 10 minutes. The maximum dose we can do use in diaciform is 200 mg. The lorasiform is 40 mg every uh, for 3 hours. Then we can admit the patient. And if the phenobarbital is available, we can give 130 mg uh, and 260 mg. Then intubate the patient and uh, in, in the ICU. If you are coming to case review, we already treated with this patient in the uh, treated with this patient alcohol withdrawal syndrome. But after all supportive management and medical management, the uh, symptoms not subside. What may be the reason? We'll go to alcohol withdrawal mimics. These are the mimics. Sir, can anyone answer fast? I have one chocolate. Please answer. What is the reason for restlessness in this case? Electrolyte abnormalities or meningitis and encephalitis or hepatic encephalopathy, CVA or vernix encephalopathy. So, outside, uh, uh, sisters from outside, anyone can answer and take this chocolate. Come, come, come front and get it. Good, vernix encephalopathy is the answer. So, we will see what is vernix encephalopathy. Come, who answer? That means you understood my topic. Very good. So, Vernix Sensopalapathy is an acute neurologic condition in with psychotic manifestation characterized by uh, classic trait of confusion, ophthalmology and ataxia. In our case, there is no, uh, there is confusion and ataxia. There is no ophthalmology. It is a disorder which caused by deficiency of thiamine. It affects the central as well as peripheral nervous system. As it can be life-threatening illness, it requires early diagnosis and management. We treated with this patient thiamine, initial 500 mg IV TDS for 3 days, followed by 200 mg IV uh, for 5 days. I summarize, I conclude my uh, presentation. I summarize now, alcohol withdrawal is a life-threatening and challenging condition. No pharmacological measures are equally important. Sorry, non-pharmacological, benzodiazepine, phenobarbital and dexmedetomidine are the drug of choice. Should not forget alcohol withdrawal syndrome mimics. So all alcohol withdrawal patients need high dose of thiamine.